You are listening to Preconceived, where we examine the preconceptions that shape how we view the world and the paradigms by which we live our lives. Hey everybody, I'm Zale Mednick and welcome back to another episode of Preconceived. The world of dating is certainly exciting and dynamic, but equally as often it can be intimidating and make people very uncomfortable. The seemingly simple act of a man approaching a woman he is interested in can feel like the most gigantic task in the world. For some it comes naturally, but for the vast majority I would say, the thought of approaching a stranger, having a conversation, and possibly turning that into something more brings up feelings of humiliation, vulnerability, and insecurity. As technology transforms the way we interact with each other, and particularly with the advent of dating apps like Tinder and Bumble, the discomfort of interacting in person with someone you're interested only seems to be growing. Yet while we acknowledge that many people struggle to meet people and initiate romance, it can often feel taboo to talk about. More so for people who actually want to take the time to improve on this ability and develop confidence, the resources and tools to do so haven't always been widely available. But the good news is there actually are resources that are available to bridge that gap, one of which has been labeled pickup artistry. Pickup artists help men develop the confidence to approach women or people of whichever gender they're interested in and offer a variety of tips and techniques on how to do so. I am very delighted to welcome Eric von Markovic, better known as Mystery, to the podcast. Mystery is considered one of the most famous dating gurus and pickup artists in the world and is very much a cultural icon. He was host of VH1's show The Pickup Artist, and he gained international prominence when he was featured in Neil Strauss's best-selling book The Game, Penetrating the Society of Pickup Artists. An industry leader, Mystery has trained thousands of students all over the world as a lecturer, author, and coach. Mystery, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, man. We are inside and staying warm and safe. Absolutely. You are in Las Vegas, and I am in Toronto, which is also your hometown. My very hometown. Absolutely love that city. Uh, but you're in the cold right now, so I'm glad to be in Vegas. <laughs> Uh, so I'm excited to have you on the podcast. I read the game a long time ago. I remember reading it in 2007. I remember exactly where I was and chatting about it with one of my best friends. I remember then watching your show, uh, The Pickup Artist. So this is really cool for me to be able to have you on the podcast. Well, I appreciate it, man. Those are very kind words. Thank you. Many people who are listening to this probably aren't so familiar with this whole concept. How would you describe a pickup artist and how did you get involved in this line of work? Good questions. What is a pickup artist? That's someone who is skilled at the art of beginning conversations with groups of people. That's what a pickup artist is. Now, what a pro pickup artist is, he's a man who's trying to reach mastery of the art of cold approach pickup. A man cannot be a master until he can build another master. So that's what it's about. People are trying to master this game. The metaphor game is much better than the metaphor of love is war. No, love is a game. And they're trying to get good at this game so that they can teach it to others. That's what a pro pickup artist is. You learn a lot by teaching others. Yeah, especially, I mean, I think that how you just referred to it as that cold approach, which basically implies going up to somebody you've never met before who in this context, you might find, or I might be at a coffee shop and find somebody attractive. A cold approach would be me going up and having the confidence and having the skills to effectively go up to them and say, to be able to initiate that conversation, because initiation is often the most challenging part uh, and it terrifies people. That is the skill set. What I recommend people do is recognize first the distinction between skill set development and skill set use. A lot of guys are trying to pick up a girl without a skill set. Isn't that foolhardy? The first stage is skill set development. Then once you have the skill, you can go to stage two, which is skill set use, meet a dozen women, date, get options, and then move forward to stage three, which is pick one. Pick a girl from all the girls that have selected you. But what a lot of people do is they think they're in stage three. Pick one. When they don't yet have the skills. My focus has been on skill set development, specifically what to say when you open. What to say to demonstrate higher value, to trigger attraction. 
It's literally the collection of gambits or game pieces, uh, routines, stories that we collect and we hone through practice and repetition until a time in the future when a woman of particular quality comes along, we have the technical savvy to run our personality conveying material and attract the girl. That's the game plan. And what a lot of guys could use is a coach to work on understanding that there's a structure to pick up, to work on the material to fill in that structure, and then to work on the delivery. What's so cool about it, it's learnable. You can learn this. It is about skill set development, having your own repertoire of material to run when it is definitely needed. Personality conveying material. Do you have any? Do you use personality conveying material when you meet new groups of people? I don't think I have anything prepared necessarily. I've gone up to women before and embarrassed myself because I thought that I could just let my personality naturally come out. And I think you're hitting on something there. There are many situations I've found myself very awkwardly kind of forcing myself go up to this girl because I acknowledge that it is important to meet people and that I don't want to rely on some fortuitous chance of that's how I'm going to meet somebody. I want to take some control. And if, I mean, now I'm in a committed relationship, but when I was dating, sometimes I can recall seeing somebody and thinking they're attractive. I'd like to go up to them. And for me, the big step was getting that confidence to actually go up to them and talk to them. But then when I went up to them, I didn't really have much to say. And I think a lot of people look at this topic and say, this should be something innate. This shouldn't be, or this isn't something that you do teach. And you said it's teachable. But I think the proof is in the pudding that most guys don't really know what to say when they go up to a woman. And because of that, guys don't go up as frequently to women. And it becomes this uncomfortable interaction. So I think there's, that's the real value in what you're doing. Well, having what we call an opener, it's a short story to initiate a chat. Having an opener in your mind, and it's your default opener, the opener you'll go to if you don't know who they are and you have nothing to say. If you have a default opener, then you can trust in one person to be on your side when you get there into that new group. You, you will run your opener, a personality conveying story that does not telegraph interest in the girl because uh, you had brought up earlier the idea that the man walks up to a girl and has to say something. That is very rare that a woman is by herself. Pickup is about approaching groups of people, not a girl by herself, meeting her friends, befriending everybody, and then getting a chance with permission from the peer group to isolate your selected interests to get to know each other better. So we need openers, indirect openers, where we do not telegraph interest in the target because we're meeting her friends too. You don't know who the boyfriend is, who the brother is. She could be with her dad. But if her dad falls in love with you because you're a lovable being, then he will give his daughter to you if he loves you, like a son. A part of skill set development is letting go of the outcome of getting the girl and instead switching to a focus on one of the phases in the timeline of courtship to get good at something. In order to get a girl, you're going to have to perform something. A pickup artist is a performing artist. So what is your material? What is your repertoire of material? There are four phases in pickup. The first phase is opening. You're gonna need some openers, son. You need some short stories to initiate a chat. You'll need more than one opener too because you'll be stacking openers. What do you mean by stacking openers? Sequentially saying stories. Mm. And openers are just short stories so they can captivate very quickly. 
And then you can switch topics quickly too. That's normal to do when you have rapport with people and stack to a new opener. Can you give me an example of an opener? The one I was using when I was in Bali uh, before Vegas here was happy 2020. We're in the future. We are living in the future today. How cool is that? That was my opener. And that's a great opener. Not very useful today because it's not a happy 2020 for some people, a lot of people. But the advantage of using that, for example, as opposed to, hey, how you doing? There's a big difference there. There's a big difference because I'm not telegraphing interest. I'm conveying my current emotional state as non-needy, non-threatening and playful. Happy 2020. But I'm not hitting on the girl on the open, thereby offending her friends. Because women are in groups. Sometimes there are men in those groups. They're approachable sets. As long as you pay respect to the men. Don't hit on the girl on the open. Instead, convey your personality for a few minutes and see if you can draw indicators of interest out from her using demonstrations of higher value. In picking up a woman, you're going to have to perform something. You're going to have to say something where you're not hitting on her on the open, captivate her attention, draw her into qualifying herself to you and investing in the conversation, and then building comfort with each other. So you need material for each of the phases. So three openers, three DHV stories, three qualifier questions, and three comfort games. 12 routines in total make your act. Would you mind defining for some people what those last three terms were that you used? Uh, DHVs. DHV stands for demonstration of higher value. If you demonstrate that you are pre-selected by other women, that's a DHV. Women can save the step of having to get to know you because you obviously have value for women. You're seen with a group of women. Other women will find you attractive because of that. That's a natural DHV. And we want to be able to convey that we are pre-selected by other women. So how would you do that in a normal social setting? Just make sure that you are potentially you would go out with other girls that's certainly a level of game it's a higher level of game where you're going out with girls that you've met on a previous night but what you can do on a typical night is if you're going out by yourself or with with the friend a male friend perhaps what you can do is open up two sets the first set builds pre-selection you are seen with with friends and then you open the second set, and that second set will be drawn into the first set through introductions. Here's the secret. You're going to meet her in the second set. You're not going to meet her in the first set because you don't have social proof. You don't have peer approval, and you don't have pre-selection. But in the second set, you do. So you're considerably more attractive in the second set. So if you want to attract a particularly beautiful girl, I've noticed in my life personally that I've had a much better chance of attracting that girl if she was in the second set. So that's a part of group theory, man. You're going to have to open up more than one set. And for those who don't know what a set is, a set is basically going up to a, a group of girls. So you're saying the first group of girls you go up to and get to know, that might not be the group in which you find the girl that you wanted. That might be a way for you to establish, establish yourself in that scene, like you said. A set is an interaction that you have with a group of people. A two set is two people. A couple is a two set. Two girls. That's a two set. A three set has three people in it. A four set, four people, a five set, five people, and so on. Now, what's the difference between a three set and a five set? Talk louder. Keep the group together. Tell your stories to the group. Keep the group together. Don't ping off one person, one guy, and talk his ear off in the hopes of infiltrating his group. When you're just going to have to repeat everything you've said in his ear, to the rest of the group at some point. So yeah, know your openers. You'll need lots of them. Another opener I can give you is this one. 
Nothing can wreck this day. My friends and I conducted a caper, a project, and now that it's over, we are celebrating like the end of Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> Nothing can wreck this day. It's a statement opener. It's not a question. It's not an opinion opener. It conveys that I'm in a playful state on the open. That's very important to do. And it is, in my opinion, genius. The first word I say to the group is nothing. It's a, a state changer, as opposed to saying something familiar like, how you do it? Basically, what you're saying is when you're entering one of these conversations, which many of us have such trepidation about, offer some value, say something interesting. Don't just say, hi, I'm Zale. Nice to meet you. I think you're attractive. Uh, uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Don't so that's do that. A, that's direct game. Then there's indirect game, which gives you far more maneuverability. Because you're going to convey your personality first in the first few minutes before she has to decide whether she wants to hang out with you or not. That's the difference between direct and indirect game. You're opening indirect by telling a story that captivates their mind instantly. It's a rapport building thing where you go in presuming you know each other and you're telling an interesting story as opposed to trying to get them to talk. That doesn't happen until a later phase in qualifying. Now, you had asked about qualifying as well. Qualifying is the act of asking questions in the hopes that she will DHV herself so that you can then indicate your interest for having said interesting things. In other words, you show interest, but not until the qualification phase where she has earned your interest. Now, indicators of interest are also known as IOIs. You can give IOIs to a girl. Wow, you're very attractive. Or you can receive IOIs from the girl. There are also indicators of disinterest we call them negs. It's, you're not hitting on her, you're doing the opposite. You're negging her. So the term neg comes up. It's a statement or action one makes to briefly disqualify oneself from being considered a potential suitor. If I were to say to a girl, oh, you little shit. Oh, that's a neg. I'm not insulting her, but I am giving a brotherly tease. Now what some guys do is they overdo it and they get such reaction from a girl by negging her that they get into a neg warfare and it goes nowhere. The idea is just to prime her to want to qualify herself to you. An example of that is if I were to qualify by asking, is there more to you than meets the eye? I could say, I'm not sure about you. Is there more to you than meets the eye? I could also do the opposite. I could say, you are drop dead gorgeous. Is there more to you than meets the eye? And I can do either one to see which gets a more favorable reaction. And then I can just stick to that. Now, I'm sure you get this. I'm sure you've had this question asked to you before. A lot of what you're talking about is obviously, it sounds formulaic. It sounds like it's a strategy as opposed to necessarily conveying just your authentic personality. I see where you're coming from. The thing is, it has to happen in stages. You can't attract and build comfort and seduce all at the same time. There is a timeline here from meeting her to beginning a sexual relationship. It's all about the timeline. It's about getting good at the timeline from meet to sex. That timeline has scenes. That timeline has memories to be shared. It's the love story between you and the girl you meet. It's a love story. That's what courtship is. So I've broken down the love story into three main stages or acts in a play. Game is playing solidly, getting the girl forming a true relationship with her. That is solid game, but it happens in a series of acts. 
So I've, I've put objectives to the acts. Act one is attraction, her growing attracted to me and me growing attracted to her. Act two is comfort building, getting to know each other intimately, building a connection. And act three is seduction, hopefully mutual seduction, or rather, if you have attraction and comfort, she'll seduce you. Women are better at seduction, or at least better than me. The women I've met are better at me than uh, at seduction, so I leave it to them to seduce me. I am strongly a believer that your very girlfriend, the, the woman that you have in your life right now, you had gone through all of these phases or scenes in creating the love story that began your loving relationship. So I'm more into the idea of becoming a proficient pickup artist than I am with hopeful dreaming that my personality is going to be good enough to get the girl of my dreams. You want a dream girl? You're going to have to man up, son. You want a dream girl? There are a lot of guys vying for her. And if you want to be the man to win her heart, you're going to have to be lovable and you're going to have to convey those lovable personality characteristics to her using some form of languaging. I think that there is definite value in appreciating that these qualities that we like to think of in this romantic way of they're just inherent, your personality will shine through. It doesn't, it doesn't really work like that. But, but I, have, I have a lot of women who listen to this podcast, and I know some of them might hear what you're saying with the word seduction, for example, uh, and think of that as a form of manipulation. I don't think a woman is manipulating me when she seduces me, especially if I'm attracted to her and I feel comfort. So no, I don't feel that. So you would say then to the woman, I've felt seduced before and I haven't felt like that's manipulation. So if I were to seduce a woman, that's not manipulation. That's just effective courting. Uh, courting's a weird word. Courting's a weird word. It's an yeah. old word, but we still use it. This is all about the timeline of courtship. I get a person from approaching coldly all the way to beginning a sexual relationship. And what you do with that relationship is up to you. Get a marriage counselor, right? But I do believe that many of the cognitive models or gambits, game pieces, that can fit in any of the phases from me to beginning a sexual relationship, I think that they're useful in the relationship as well. Yeah, that's my thought. But I, my focus is on getting people fired up to start gaming, game hard, train to game, know what you're going to say when you go into public gatherings. It doesn't matter which gambit you use, which story you tell of the 40 or 50 stories in your head. Just have stories you've told before so that when you do tell them, you don't have ums and ahs, you don't have pregnant and awkward pauses and you don't stutter and convey that you don't know what the hell you're talking about. You want to put your best foot forward. You want to convey that you are a high valued male. So why not use material that you've used before? The secret to attracting women is laughter. I have hung out with some of the most respected pickup artists in the world. I have met them and gamed with them. And the one common thread, the one common theme amongst all the great pickup artists is that they make their sets, their groups of girls, laugh. Seriously, they're funny. Going in seriously doesn't work. Coming in with a smile, a great sense of humor, in other words, know your openers and make them fun and playful and non-threatening, that is the way to begin a relationship, a respectful relationship with a new party of people you've just met. Don't bring your baggage to the club. So you've trained thousands of guys and coached so yeah. many people. Why are people so fearful of approaching women. It 
comes down, I think, because of the fear of rejection and just lack of confidence. How do you teach people to get over that? Well, you get over it by knowing your openers. I feel much less nervous to open that five set. I feel much more inclined to open that set knowing that the opener I've used in the last 20 sets worked. So it's going to open the next set. That's why openers are so important. So even if you're going to come up with your own openers, you should at least know what the best pickup artists in the world are using. Now, now we've talked a lot about the first phase, opening. But there are many other phases to zoom into, like A2, which is the art of attraction, quite literally triggering her attraction mechanism so that she'll give you indicators of interest for having done so. I cannot hit on a girl until she's first hit on me. So I open the set. I then stack openers. I then run DHV material, which are longer stories that convey that I'm pre-selected by women, that I'm the leader of men, that women will find attractive. So as soon as you can get an indicator of interest or two from a woman, you can then move forward and qualify her and ask her questions about herself. Some qualifier questions are, uh, I gave you the, the one, is there more to you than meets the eye? Another one is, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Or a really great one is, and I say this very smoothly, if you had to, you had to audition for X Factor in two weeks' time, what would you sing? Or would you dance? Or do comedy? You got to do something to impress Simon Cowell. That's a qualifier question. I'm not supposed to show interest in her just because she's attractive. I want the girl to be interested in me so i must be interesting so if i have a series of interesting anecdotes or stories to tell that i've rehearsed and prepared then i could be interesting to her and that's the whole point of attraction is just to be interesting i'm not trying to get her aroused we're in a club we're in a public gathering we're with her friends but i am trying to get her curious to know more. You see how it's like a movie? You see the genius of this? We have taken this to a high level. What I mean by this is the results of the pickup artist friends of mine that I have around the world are utterly astounding. They are gifted like a black belt martial artist is. They are gifted in their own talents, the talent of cold approach pickup, the talent of performing personality conveying material, getting laughter, smiles, and ultimately winning a girl's heart. It's a beautiful art form. Sure, we science the shit out of it. And some people think that that is uh, too calculated. But out of this, comes a beautiful art form, the art of pickup. Every love story is a little different. Every love story is a little different. Every girl is unique. Every man's game is unique. So my focus has been on getting guys up to speed, having material, getting their delivery under their belt through volume and velocity of, of sets. The volume is how many sets they do in a night and the velocity is how much time they spend waffling between sets so that they can get enough experience with their delivery of the material in a structured manner. And then the fifth key is instant feedback from a coach. And I help them get good set by set. I, I know you know that there's stigma around the world of pickup artistry from women, from some men. But one thing that I heard that resonated with me once was when I heard somebody say, the scariest thing is a guy who does not know how to go up to a girl and interact. So from the woman's perspective, I, some women listening to this, I'm sure it doesn't resonate with, but with some, maybe the message is, well, would you rather guys be socially awkward and not know what to say and then not lead to those enjoyable interactions and make connections 
Or would you rather guys be able to go into a bar or go into a social situation and be equipped with some of the skills, maybe not all of them, they might not agree with all of the skills, but some of the skills to generate that conversation and generate that energy. Good thoughts. Very good thoughts. Well, Mystery, thank you so much for chatting with me. I think uh, I think it's such an interesting topic. And listen, it's you won't be surprised to hear it's a risque, it's a more risque topic than many of the things I've spoken about on this podcast. Sometimes it's it's considered quite controversial, no doubt. But I think at the very least, this opens up an important conversation that men and anybody, we've been talking about men approaching women, but you could talk about this with any gender. That's just the most common. But that the idea that men are terrified often to approach women is real. And that maybe that is something that we shouldn't just ignore in society. And maybe it's something that men can learn to be better at. And it's a skill. And by enhancing that skill, it will ultimately lead to more people meeting each other and lead to better and healthier relationships. Three days with me and your life changes. This is what happens. I have been running boot camps ever since the TV show. I have been running pickup artist boot camps around the world, teaching scores of men the elegant art of the cold approach pickup. I see the results in three days. I'm seeing it with my own eyes. It's, it's wonderful to see that there's something I can actually teach, practical teachings that change a man's game, improves their game dramatically. I'm mystery, this is what I do. This is my focus. It's the one thing that I can do this one offering is to train somebody. I can put them under my wing for, for a weekend. And at the end of that weekend, they go back to their hometown with a skill set. Something they can focus on perfecting. And if people are interested in uh, learning more about you, how can, they, how can they find you, Mystery? Very simple. On your phone right now, type in askmystery.com. And my... My training offerings are available on that website. Perfect. Well, Mystery, thank you so much for joining me. Very interesting perspectives and uh, unique topic. Uh, It is, no doubt. Thank Thank you you very much. much. Great questions. And uh, thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of Preconceived. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to Preconceived. Please subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast platform you use and be sure to rate and review us. We'll see you next time.